Hey, how we doing, Titans fans? Titan Uprising here. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. I am finally over the 100 subscriber count. I'm at 110. Uh, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for the support. I'm glad you guys like the videos and want to subscribe to see more. It makes me feel good and lets me know I'm doing something right. And um, I'm hoping I'm separating myself a little bit from all the other BS guys that report on the Titans and they're not all, they're not all bad, but a lot of it's clickbait and they just want to see you do that or see you click on it for, I get a sick of it. Okay. Uh, especially Bleacher Report. If you guys, I'm a Bleacher Report community captain for Tennessee Titans. Um, that's how I started this. If you guys don't know, I've said this before in previous videos, but in case you haven't seen it, that's one of the reasons I started this. So thank you Bleacher Report community family. I appreciate you guys a lot. I started this because of you. Um, now, a lot of those report or the articles you see on Bleach Report, it's like it just wants you to click on something and I read it and I'm like, man, I think I'm dumber for reading that. Um, and then a lot of the other stuff was like, oh, you got to click on this. Like the Tennessean, you got to click on this and uh, you want to get how many free articles a year? And then, I mean, I I try to pick which ones I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, read. And sometimes I'm like, man, that's a bad one. I wish I wouldn't have clicked on that. And then other times, I'm like, eh, it's okay. It's not a bad article. But, you know, they try to get you in the clickbait. Um, now, someone might say, Chris, hey, this is what you did to me on this video because I'm going to label this uh, Tennessee Titans Weapon X for 2023. And I didn't bring him up in the last video because I did three under the radar players on the Tennessee Titans offense. Um, because I do believe those guys were under the radar. They're not getting a lot of talk, a lot of hype. This guy is. And. That's why I didn't put him on there. I wanted to because I have a lot to say about this guy. Um, and that is Ty J Spears. He, uh, first off, I want to call him Weapon X. Uh, I hope you guys like it, maybe. You know, someone's got to give him a name. Like we got King Henry, right? We got to have something for Ty J Spears. Um, I don't know if you guys are into like the Marvel uh, movies or comic books or anything like that, but you know, Weapon X there, you got Wolverine. Um, the last guy that called himself Weapon X. Um, was uh, a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll give you guys a little, little, a couple seconds to figure out if you know who that is or not. Brian Dawkins. So he called himself that. You know, he'd crawl out in the field sometimes like a bear or whatever, and just man, that guy was wild. So I like Tajay Spears a lot. Um, there's a lot to like about him. He's you know he's five ten or around two hundred five, two hundred ten pounds. Um, I'm sure he's a little lighter after with camp, you know, running around and getting in football shape. Um, that's what he was at the combine uh, and pro day. I'm going to pop up some stats here for you guys. Now, uh, 2019, he had 32 rushing attempts for 192 yards uh, for an average of six yards per carry, which is pretty dang good. One touchdown, five catches for 133 yards. Uh, for an average of 26.6, .6, which is just absurd. And then one touchdown receiving. Now, his next year, 2020, um, and that you guys can see, obviously, we know he went to Tulane. Um, he had 37 rushing attempts for 274 yards, 7.4 average, two touchdowns, two catches for 30 yards with a 15 average, and no receiving touchdowns. Now, he starts getting, you know, a little more of the bulk now. 2021 comes up. 129 attempts, 863 yards, 6.7 average, 9 touchdowns, 19 receptions for 145 yards with a 7.6 average. Now his final year, and this is what got him drafted, that's why he was one of the most explosive running backs in the in college football last year. 229 yards for one or sorry, 229 attempts for 1,581 yards for a 6.9 average, 19 uh rushing touchdowns. Added 22 catches for 256 yards for an 11.6 average per reception. And then also tacking on two receiving touchdowns. That's awesome production. And the one thing I like the most on that is the receiving part. We don't have that in this offense. Um, Dontrell Hillier, we don't have him coming back. Um, we pretty much slammed the door shut on that by drafting somebody like Tajay Spears. Um, I hate to say this, I don't want it to sound negative, but I don't want to see Dontre, Dontre Hilliard back on this team because if he is, it's most likely because we're dealing with an injury. Nothing against him. I, 
liked him last year. He was actually our leading touchdown, uh, or leading receiver for touchdowns as a running back, right? Because our receivers just couldn't get open last year and they're banged up. And then, you know, Todd Downing will, Todd Downing you. So, uh, he will have that effect. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Todd Downing will Todd Downing you. <laughs> hey, if you're Titans fans, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, guys, this is this is huge for us. Huge to have this. Complimenting um, Derrick Henry. It's almost going to be like a Deion Lewis, you know, except we try giving Deion Lewis the, the – make him the RB1 and then having uh, um, Henry be RB2. That was a stupid decision. So, this is going to be a nice guy to compliment him. Um, I will pull up another one here. Uh, this guy is uh, – he's working hard to um, – and then I'm going to pull up a little snippet that I really liked here. And this was on Broadway Sports Media, if you guys want to read the full thing. But right here it shows Tennessee Titans rookie running back Ty J. Spears was the most dynamic offensive player selected by General, General Manager Rand Carthon in the 2023 NFL Draft. For an offense that's desperately searching for playmakers, Spears is capable of creating explosive plays. Spears projects to be heavily involved in Tennessee's offense behind Derrick Henry. Tulane running backs coach Derek Sherman oversaw Spears' development for the Green Wave. Spears is an uber-athletic physical specimen. Coach Sherman, who was among Spears' biggest supporters, had a hand in advancing Spears' abilities. As we saw from his um, stats going up that we show, I just showed you previously, he only got better as time went on. So he was definitely, definitely a hard worker, guys. Um, now says here, Coach Sherman recently spoke exclusively with Broadway Sports. Sherman uh, Sherman Spears' dynamic 2022 campaign, the long-term health of his knee, overcoming adversity, Spears' fit in his own base uh, rushing scheme, and more. Coach Sherman believes Spears can contribute in 2023. And guys, if you do want to open up this article, um, there is more. It's a premium, premium article, so if you I don't know if you guys are by any chance, um, premium members on this or not. But if you are, you can read all those other um, points, topic points that they're, they will, they're talking about. But I'm not, so I can't get the rest of this access. So um, I'm just going to show you or talk about the, uh, uh, the the productive year he had in 2022 that they brought up here. So uh, JM asked or says, Ty J Spears was unbelievable, unbelievably productive under your tutelage in 2022. He rushed for 1,528 yards and an astounding 19 touchdowns. He ended his career at Tulane with a run of eight straight games with at least 120 rushing yards. That's crazy. That's a Derrick Henry thing right there. Was that just a case of a super talented player getting more opportunity? What did you see click for Spears this past season? Now, Coach Sherman says, I would say yes. That was a case of a talented player getting in the zone towards the conclusion of his college football career. He was the best player on the field. He understood everything that was going on around him. That's what clicked. I love it. This guy got better, put the work in. Uh, his running backs coach has nothing but great things to say about him. Um, you know, everything clicked. He, he was saying he was the best player in the field. You guys got to watch the highlights on this guy if you haven't. He's electric. He's been doing it in the camp so far. Um, all the reports are saying that this guy is just lighting it up. And... That's just, man, that's awesome to hear. We need that type of electricity in the, in the offense and that explosiveness. Um, and that they said the uh, dynamic offensive player is what they said, and I agree with that too. That's that's why I said that nickname Weapon X there. <laughs> right? I got to think of something for him. Um, this guy is going to be lightning in a bottle for us. Uh, we need it. We desperately need it. Now, I will tell you guys now that I was a little disappointed when we drafted him. And it's not because of him, per se. It's more or less because we did not draft a wide receiver with that pick. Now, you know, I thought for sure we're walking out with at least one wide receiver in the uh, um, with one of our first five picks. I would have, sorry, first three picks I would have said, okay? I would have said we're getting a wide receiver in our first three picks. We didn't get one. I think most of you would have thought the same thing too. A lot of us, I did some mock drafts here. 
I thought we might even take Jackson Smith and Jigba with our first pick. You know, I, I, we need it. We need playmakers. But now seeing how they're going to run this offense, you know, we're going to have probably two tight ends, two wide receiver sets. If we end up getting Hopkins, that's going to be, you know, there's two good wide receivers. We have two good tight ends there. I think Wild's going to step up, and I think uh, Shig's going to make a second year leap. And then we have um, either Spears or um, Henry back there. That's going to be lethal. Uh, I've also been seeing reports here that Spears, uh, he's been lining up in the slot. And then in the in the backfield too, so they're throwing them. So uh, we saw Henry do that versions of it last year, and I think it might have been Tim Kelly that was actually doing it because we know Todd Stupid Downing didn't know what he was doing, um, and we saw times where Henry would go out of the um, on the outside of the formation as a, like a D or as a wide, in the wide receiver set. Then he'd come back in to be a running back, or they would take him from running back and put him uh, into the wide receiver position, either slot or outside. And, you know, that's not going to scare anybody. This guy is going to scare somebody. I would be scared of this guy lining up outside and, like, you ha you thought he was going to be in the backfield. And now it's like, and you know, Tennessee runs out two tight end, two wide receiver set with a running back, and it's him. Then he then he splits out. You're like, oh, well, crap. What are we going to do? Uh, you got to cover him now. You know, your defense is scrambling, and you, you hit him down the seam or you hit him on a quick slant if he's lined up in the slot. That's just... That gives us a big versatility or such a big versatility in the offense. Um, and that's more what, and I've been saying it for a, a numerous videos here. That's what we're going for on both sides of the ball. We want guys that can play numerous positions, do numerous type of things. Um, and it makes me scared, to be honest with you, a little bit off, off topic, but it, it makes me scared of what's going to happen to Henry. I want Henry to retire a Tennessee Titan desperately. He's my favorite player. I want him to retire a Titan. Uh, now I'm scared that someone like Spears coming in is going to, you know, be like the new, you know, running back that we're going to go with. Not saying we don't need that, you know, because we do need a running back like that as well. Someone that can, you know, Henry's not going to catch seven passes a game for 120 yards. You know, we, we've been utilizing him more than that. He's working on catching, but you know, he's more the he's more of the traditional runner. We know that. But like I said, Henry's gotten better at catching. He has he has improved. You can't say he hasn't. He's gotten better. Putting the work in. Um, but that's where Rand Carthon came from, San Francisco. Sometimes they're rolling out two, three backs, right? And then they, until they got Christian McCaffrey last year. Um, you know, so I think that's where this offense is heading. I think Spears is a guy that's going to be a, like a new, the new type of running back going forward. Like I said, I, I want Henry to get signed for another three years and this guy to compliment him. Let's hope, we, let's hope that happens. That'll make me a very happy Titans fan. Um, the only other downside there when Spears got selected was right after he got selected, a report came out that he has no ACL, <laughs> right? He just, just shredded, it's gone. Um, you know, he's said he's healthy. Vrabel has said he's healthy. This guy played in the Senior Bowl this, and lit it up there. This guy has um, done very well in training camp. So... I mean, what else do you want? I mean, I mean, if we drafted him, the report came out that he fell flat and, you know, can't hurt or can't play, you know, I, I, I get it. I mean, you guys are right, but, I mean, knock on wood, you know, so far he hasn't, you know, been hurt. Uh, I know it's still young, but, you know, for a guy that doesn't have an ACL, I mean, he looks like he's pretty doing pretty good out there. Um, so I'm trying not to be worried about that. And then I saw Schefter say something about uh, he's a one-year or a one-contract guy, not going to make it to the second contract. Uh, okay. If we got four productive years out of them, I'd be happy. Would I rather see eight? Sure. But, um, you know, I, I'm trying to stay positive on that part of it. I don't think we would draft the guy. I think knowing what J Rob's history was, we're not going to sit there and try and reach for a guy like Caleb, Bar Caleb Farley, you know, that was just obviously banged up beyond belief and can't just, he just can't stay healthy. Um, Back surgeries are a little different too, though. I don't. I try to stay stay away from the back surgery there. Uh, the back issues; those those are a lifetime. I will pop up uh, the last thing here for you guys, and it shows here roughly 20 minutes after the first practice of Titans minicamp finished, when several players had talked with the media coming off the field, and Derrick Henry's uh, more formal session at the podium was already underway. Ty J Spears was still catching machine thrown passes. Spears said he catches 
balls after practice until he gets tired. And then that was a Tuesday, and it says Tuesday that was 100 plus. I love it. Now, just that little snippet right there shows you why he got better in college every year and why his running backs coach was praising him. And it just shows the type of player we got. And we're seeing it on the field. We're seeing it um, uh, in practice. I want to see this guy with some pads on. I can't wait. Uh, like I said, he's built good too. 5'10", 210, 205 around that range. You know, he's not he's not a scrawny guy. Uh, I'm excited for this guy. He's going to be electric for us. Uh, I think it's not even a question. He's already usurped uh, Hassan Haskins as our wide, or running back too. And... We're going to need a guy like this because our receiver core is not the greatest, especially if we don't end up getting Hopkins. We are really going to need this guy to contribute contribute a lot, and he's going to be relied upon. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you think of Tajay Spears? And then just to, what do you think of the nickname? Do you like Weapon X? Do you not like Weapon X? Uh, I, I got mixed feelings. I like it, but I think there's something better out there. There's got to be something better. Somebody smarter than me can has to come up with that. I really want feedback on this one, guys, if you can. Um, but we'll talk soon, everybody, and tighten up.